Hi, folks, and welcome to Rewatch. We're on Season 1, Episode 11 of Dave Filoni's Clone Wars. This is called Dooku Captured. Anakin and Obi-Wan encounter Dooku together, and this is where I remember watching it for the first time thinking, this isn't good. Because, obviously, the, uh, from Episode 2 to Episode 3, they did not meet um, uh, Dooku at all. Because Obi-Wan says that line to Anakin at the beginning of Episode 3, this time, Anakin, we do it together. Okay, well, they're going to encounter Dooku together several times. And here's the thing. Maybe, maybe, watching this episode again, she goes, Anakin goes charging after Dooku again. Dooku escapes, and Anakin goes charging after him while Obi-Wan takes the elevator or whatnot and doesn't go, you know, mindlessly free-falling down an elevator shaft. I guess, maybe, but that they encountered them, they encountered Dooku, and, and there really wasn't any purpose for them to encounter Dooku. They could have been just pursuing him. And what happens is these... Uh, this is, um, oh, I've forgotten the pirate's name. He's, he's in it all the time. But anyway, it's when that pirate, oh, go, did I write his name down? I don't know if I did. Um, cause I remember him all the time. He, he sounds like, um, Onaka. There it is. Uh, when, um, uh, when he gets captured by, when the, the pirates capture Count Dooku, I thought that whole episode was really just garbage. It makes Dooku look like a doofus. Remember, Dooku's still the big baddie in episode two. So again, if you're watching these in chronological order, you should be impressed that Dooku is back because Dooku was, he was bad business for Obi-Wan and Anakin last time. This time, will he stand a chance? You know, what's going to happen? Well, no, du Dooku it cowers, runs, gets defeated all the time, escapes. He runs like a coward the whole time. There's a there's an exit. He runs for the exit door. That's not who Dooku is, um, especially not in episode two. So I really didn't like that. Um, now, while pursuing him, they come across, um, um, oh gosh, I've forgotten it now. I've got to look it up again. A Gundark, duh. <laughs> they come across a Gundark. And I remember in the behind the scenes featurette on this one, uh, Filoni was trying to imagine what a Gundark look like, looks like. And George Lucas said there, there already is one. And he pointed out West End Games to them. So they used the West End Games description of Gundarks, which shows how little Filoni knew about the expanded universe. I mean, he really did not. He acts like he's a big Star Wars fan. He read the Timothy Zahn trilogy and he watched the movies. And that was it. That was all, that was the extent of his Star Wars knowledge. So he had no idea there was this other stuff. And he actually like, so there's this uh, role-playing game that already had one in there. So George said, hey, use this. And we're like, okay. Yeah, you never knew about it. You're not, a star, I'm not saying you have to know every little thing about it, but if you're, if you're going to do a series on Star Wars, maybe, maybe do some background. Say, hey, what else is out there that I can read up on so I can really study this before I start creating content for it? I don't know. I really just hate Filoni. That's really, that's really what this boils down to. But anyway, I'm watching this for the first time. I was like, How? oh, by the way, uh, when the pirates capture Dooku, Dooku goes for his, uh, later on, he goes for his lightsaber, but it's missing. And the pirate goes, looking for this. Okay, Count Dooku would have force grabbed it from him and then cut them all down. He's Dooku. He's a Sith Lord. I'm sorry, but I, and he really, at first I thought, well, maybe he's faking it. He's not. He's not faking it. Dooku really got captured. This is dumb. This is completely, this is one of the dumbest episodes. Um, well, there's a lot of dumb episodes in the first season, but this was a really dumb one. And I remember thinking that the first time I watched, I was like, man, this is not believable. Also, Onaka, I've never noticed this. He sounds like Puss in Boots. I, I've watched Puss in Boots, the movies and the TV show. And I was like, oh, is it the same voice actor? No, it's Jim Cummings. I didn't realize that because I didn't look at voice acting back then. And Jim Cummings was the voice of uh, Onaka, which he would have done a great dead on Puss in Boots. But listen, next time you watch it, just hear it. You're going to hear Puss in Boots from now on out. Anyway, all right, folks, that's it for now. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.